sigma notation is given by the capital letter sigma and below the letter sigma is the lower limit of the summation it's where the subscript begins and we're calling that n and l would be the lower limit so n is really the variable used as the thing that changes l is the lower limit it's a constant it's how it's the lowest number that n can accept and x well we could have called it something else but we're calling that the upper limit or how high n can go so n is restricted by only taking on values between l and x the upper limit and the lower limit in front of that we put some formula which contains n and we're just calling that f of n or f with bracket uh, with n in between brackets n is only allowed to accept whole number um, values meaning that it has to belong to the set of natural numbers so not only just whole number values but positive whole number values and it's only allowed to increase by one for each term in the sum so let's go with a brief um, uh, set of examples of the algebra that involves limits so let's say that we have n going from 1 to 5 and in front of the summation the formula becomes nothing more than n we then replace it with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and uh, all these numbers from 1 to 5 are the values and we add them together to get 15 now we can also change the formula but to be anything else like such as 2n plus 1 and you notice that the n seems to just consistently get replaced with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in sequence and ultimately we end up with the 5 terms 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 and that adds up to 35. Let's try something else. How about exponents? Once again we're just replacing exponents if the exponent is n then we just replace the exponents going from the upper uh, lower limit to the upper limit and you get 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus 81 plus 243 now this, uh, if we had to allow n to go from 1 to infinity would the summation go to infinity well I guess if all we had was n as our formula it's a given that it goes to infinity but not all of them do such as this formula here for 1 divided by n squared that ends up being pi, pi squared divided by 6 we have another example here where what if you have for example a constant and no formula but really just the number like 7 for example in front of sigma how would you handle that as n goes from 1 to 4 well that just means you add 7 to itself four times n still counts from 1 to 4 but is not used in the formula now for summation uh, for other kinds of summation let's say we have multiple terms with n somewhere in the formula in this case in the subscript of a and b we can actually break this up into the sum of terms in A and the sum of terms in B and we can just add them up together later on. For example, let's say that we have n equals 1 to 4 of say 2 to the n plus 3 to the n. We can actually break this up into the sum as n goes from 1 to 4 of 2 to the n plus the sum as n goes from 1 to 4 of 3 to the n and we can expand both and we would get the, su the same sum as if we just did 2 plus 3 to the n in the first place it's just that the terms are rearranged but as you can see here we eventually get to the sum in this case 150 
Here we have the sum as i goes from 1 to 5 of 2 to the n, and notice this is a lot like taking 2 out of the summation and just summing up the numbers uh, from 1 to 5 and then multiplying by 2 afterwards. And that means 2 is factorable outside of the sum. So when we try a little more, slightly more complicated formula like this quadratic here, we can break up the terms as we're doing here. x equals 1 to 5 of x squared. Take the 2 outside the sum like we did in the last example and have x goes from 1 to 5 of x and x goes from 1 to 5 of 4. Now for the 2 times, we'll handle that one first. Notice we just take 2 outside the sum and... As for the last term, as x goes from 1 to 5 of 4, we're simply just we're just adding our adding the number 4 five times. Well, okay, so now just to write things in uh, modified form, this is what we ended up with, and this is what we're going to add. So now by substitution, here's what we get. Two times one plus two plus three plus four plus five is two times fifteen, which becomes thirty. Thirty and twenty is fifty. The other numbers add up to fifty five, and we add fifty five and fifty, we get one oh five. Once again, we're breaking up two uh, sums, but this time notice that the upper and lower limits are a little peculiar. The first sum goes from A to B, and the next sum goes from the next integer above B, or B plus 1, up to C. This is the same thing. As long as the formulas in front of the sum are the same, then this is the same thing as saying N equals A up to C. So, for example, if we said that the first sum goes from 1 to 4, the second sum goes from 5 to 8, because 5 is the, one, the number 1 past 4, then this is the same thing as n going from 1 to 8 in a single sum expression. So you can actually simplify two sums this way. And notice that in this case, we do not substitute for x and we end up with 36x. Here we have a binomial n squared minus 2n, and once again we can have one sum for n squared, another sum for 2n, and we can actually take the 2 outside. Uh, both sums go from 1 to 6, and then by substitution we end up with 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36 minus 40 and that ends up being 50. Here's another example. Um, now, the upper and lower limits of the, of the sigma notation need not start from any standard number or end up at any standard number. For example, we can start from negative 2 and go up to 5 for t uh, ending up with 7 terms. And um, so, let's say if n goes from negative 2 to 3, and let's say we have now 2 to the n. Notice we, we start with 2 to the power of minus 2, 2 to the power of minus 1, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed. Add them all up and we end up with a, a mixed fraction uh, at the end of this question. Fifteen and three quarters.